Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Marina Saren and today's video's topic is going to be about what it is ascension. But first, let's remember a little bit of metaphysics, which is that everything is frequency, everything is vibration, everything is about consciousness, consciousness is energy, consciousness is vibration, consciousness is fractal in nature and it's composed of a multi-dimensional um, structure of different facets of the soul, of the self, that are expressing themselves simultaneously in the space and time fabric of the universe, which is the now moment. Also, in consciousness, there is this different layers of oh, a state of being, a state of awareness that define in which step of evolution or state of evolution you are right now. Dimension is not the same as density. Density stands for a, let's say, state of consciousness, whilst dimension is, let's say, a, a physical magnitude or space with a determined frequency or vibrational signature, which is also a projection of consciousness. And the evolution of consciousness is not linear. It works in cycles of energy because it's an integral it's expansion, it's integrating every experience attained ever, but also it is expanding following sacred geometry, which is, of course, the Fibonacci sequence. And of course, it follows many other metaphysical laws that I'm just not going to list here, all of them, but you get me. So knowing that everything is frequency and vibration, which are the beings that will be part of the first density of consciousness? So the beings that you will find in the first density, for instance, will be the mineral kingdom or the crystal kingdom. Those are salts, crystals, minerals, etc. As crazy as it sounds. And their awareness of level of integration of consciousness is represented by a point. And I say level of consciousness because we are multidimensional, so it means that even crystals or even the less evolved, you know, part of the scale of evolution is also existing in the highest level of evolution because we are, there's no separation. Otherwise, consciousness will not be viable. It wouldn't make sense. There needs to be an above and a below. There needs to be, on, there's only consciousness. There's only completeness. There's only infinite intelligence. There cannot be like a lack of consciousness. Never. So the connection is always there. The highest levels of these beings exist in parallelly, simultaneously to their expression in these lower levels of consciousness. And they, having that physical experience in the lower levels of consciousness, similar to what we are here experiencing in our own level of consciousness. So the level of awareness will be represented by a point because they are material, solely material, it's not that they don't have a soul, but in their level of expression, of reintegration of consciousness, like the amount of consciousness or integration of consciousness that they can contain within those vessels, in that, let's say, atomic structure, it doesn't reach out the cellular level, which is much more intelligent, which is much more complex, that can integrate much more of the ideas of the soul, you know, of a soul essence, of much more aspects, spectrums of frequency of the soul, much more aspects of the soul which is the emotional body, the mental body, etc. And as they don't have any uh, ego identity, they process no illusion of space and time. They don't conceive the idea of a space and time. Everything is here now to them. And of course, they're connected with their own kingdom collectively. They don't lose the collective consciousness. Now, their second level of consciousness or the second density, which be the plant kingdom, we have now reached a more complex atomic structure, like vessel, which can form bio biological entities known as cells that are individual, but when they connect with each other, they can create tissues and then they can create organs and they create, can create what we call organisms that now they can integrate within them as they have many functions and many different tissues for different functions, like bi biological functions and physical functions they can integrate more consciousness within that physicality, within that physical structure because of that complexity. So more facets of the soul are experienced within that physical structure. They are more expressed. 
I mean, more of them are expressed. There's more dimensional depth to the experience of consciousness because there has been an integrative process from the first density to the second density. And that's why they experience themselves as a line. They don't conceive yet their own self so much, nor space and time as to how we understand it to be. But nevertheless, they can at least understand a little bit more of their individuality and there is a little bit more separation with external. They are more conscious in this process of exchanges of energy with their external world. They experience their consciousness in a collective dynamic, which means they don't lose that dynamic of operating their consciousness. So yes, your crystals and your plants are conscious beings. But if you're watching this video, you probably already know. So in the third level of consciousness is when we have most of the animal kingdom included us humans, but not completely. And I will explain later how and why. The third level of consciousness or the third density is when a being has already developed a self-awareness or an ego identity and that has made them to fall into the illusion of separation from their own collective consciousness, which will be their species. There is an understanding of space and time. Therefore, consciousness is already represented in three dimensions, not as a point or as a line anymore. If you see humans and animals, we are different. And why? That's because animals are lower third density, while humans are upper third density. What does this mean? That animals operate with more collective consciousness dynamics. They work more collectively with their, let's say, group of like with the collective, with their species, with their same group of consciousness. They do not separate at all. That's why you see animals like always in groups, helping each other, being almost telepathic when they communicate with each other, when they exchange information. That's why you don't see them creating wars for being different, nor arguing about politics. They are beings who are in between those two levels of density, the second and the third. While humans are more oriented towards the first density, which is the next level that I'll explain about, which will be the reintegration of an element that start to intensify more here in comparison with the other two densities of consciousness. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the element in consciousness known as polarity. Polarity consciousness is everything that is dual in nature, but in a way that it is disintegrated. So feminine and masculine, for instances, are dual energies of consciousness, but I wouldn't consider them polarity energies because they aren't disintegrated necessarily they are once they are two sides of a coin so you can operate with the idea of duality without necessarily living in polarity polarity is when those dual energies or ideas have become disintegrated so the masculine and the feminine the positive and the negative has the above and the below has separated or disintegrated now this is a natural consequence that happens when unconsciousness develops a self-identity or self-awareness or ego-consciousness. Why? Because when you become self-conscious and you create your, your, the ego develops, you start to become aware of how there is a external world and an internal world, which is an illusion because the external world is a projection of the internal world. But still, the structure, let's say, works like that. There is always like dimensionality there's always like a mirror image there's always duality to everything and also trinity it is a phenomenon or a cause a natural cause that it has been created on purpose so that by having those dynamics of external versus internal you can start working with the integration of your own shadow self and evolve farther in the scale of density of consciousness to experience yourself with more dimensional depth. It is an opportunity, let's say. So animals have a mild ego awareness, like self-awareness, 
they have their own individuality now, they can decide to do things different from the collective, but still they decide to operate more with the collective. So the fourth density will be the density in which whatever species that is part of the third density is able to finally transcend that polarity consciousness and those separations that they create within their own species because first it is all projected with the self and then with the species. To then reintegrate that shadow consciousness, that illusion of separation between the external and the internal, which is an equation, there is no real separation per se, it's more like an equation will be separated, it's part of the same system, but still the dynamics are like operating in a mirror. So in the first density, polarity consciousness within your collective consciousness has been transcendent, transcendent, sorry. So you're now ready to integrate that awareness that you are one with your species, that you are one fractal. You're a bigger unitary element within the fractal structure of the universe of the all that is. But these polarity energies are all at the same time projected within the different layers of densities that consciousness have. But how? There needs to be an element or a, let's say, ground for it to man for it to converge in one same place so that dynamically this kind of interactions and exchanges of information can go on so that there is an opportunity to integrate more consciousness and more awareness of the self and its multidimensional nature yes i am talking about ecosystems or planets if you see a planet it's one consciousness in which you can find a diverse spectrum of different multidimensional aspects of itself existing in a di very different states of awareness of integration of consciousness, which is densities. This is all like a playground or a scenario, let's say, in which you're given an opportunity to evolve by relating to the outside with other elements that are also alive, there that are also organisms or consciousness like you, but at different levels, so that by mirroring, you can get a sense of what aspects of your multidimensional self are vibrating in fear or in unawareness, and so that so that then you can integrate that into consciousness. That's why I was saying that this shadow consciousness it's projected with it interdimensionally or in between all densities and that's why we have food chain because feeding from another being is a form of interaction or let's say exchange of energy or information within the field of consciousness and the external serves a purpose as every evolution is about the operate with a relationship with oneself, the external serves that purpose. The external is the reflection of our inner world. So any direct exchange of energy or interaction with the external is a direct interaction with ourselves, with our inner selves. Therefore, if we upgrade our relationships with consciousness of our external reality, which is a projection of our consciousness, we are upgrading our direct relationship with ourself. And that is why ecosystems are so important, because they are the integral that contains all of the different levels of consciousness, multidimensional facets of our consciousness in one single matrix. An example of an upgrade is when you find ways to be more peaceful in the ways that you relate to nature. For example, with the food chain, as I was mentioning before, we are not by any chance the highest part of the, or the highest level of the food chain because we have the four density beings that feed, unfortunately, from the energies of those that are below them. Such as we do with those who are below our level. The difference is that these beings prefer to feed from a ethereal energy rather than physical energy, which will be our flesh. I'm talking about 
parasites, energetic vampires, and other species that might be regressive and want to feed from others instead of help them evolve. And that's why in the community, in the, in the spiritual teachings, there has been always this discussion about service to self beings and service to others. That distinction or binary system is a pretty bit is pretty much a little bit update, um, outdated because it's a it's a little bit limited, but nevertheless, it's a general idea behind this that I'm mentioning. So, for instance, when you eat meat, you are exchanging energy and information with those that are of the level of consciousness, the realm, the specific realm, spiritual realm that you are consuming. In a way, when you consume their flesh, they also consume you because it's an energy exchange. Because everything in the universe is an exchange of energy. There's never a real consummation, like total consummation of one part consuming the other and the other part being consumed. That is a binary system that is a little bit illusionary. That is a little bit of an illusion. Because in fact, there can, always be, there can only be an exchange of energy as we always are infinite. And we can never lose or create more energy. Just transform it. Only transform it. So when you're eating an animal or a plant, you're exchanging information and energy of your realm and their realm. But furthermore, why there are so many teachings that tell you that being vegetarian is a little bit more of an upgraded relationship with your nature than being a meat eater. Disclaimer, there's nothing wrong with being a meat eater because nature is intelligent. Nature as a system is super intelligent and it works in a synchronized and super conscious dynamics, which means that it's an integral that understands furthermore than the parts of it. Let's say that the all that is of those of that system, that nature, that ecosystem, knows more about the individual parts of it because it's working in a collaborative in a it's cooperating in a collective dynamic altogether therefore because it's more integrated because it holds all perspectives possible all of the pieces of its parts it knows more than the sum of all parts so if you crave meat it's because nature is telling you nature is informing your body that you need it in the moment and it's serving you in your spiritual purpose and in your path or your survival because you need that specific information from the realm of the animal kingdom or the second or third lower density. But why people in the spiritual communities or movements always prefer a vegetarian diet? Why is it recommended? Apart from its various biological benefits, they're mostly touching a pretty much met a metaphysical base. There's a metaphysical reason behind it. Now, because animals are of a higher density than plants, and they have more ego awareness, more development of the ego self. They contain more polarity consciousness within them, within their experience, on a vessel, on the physical matrix. Because there's a higher degree of polarity consciousness in the experience of being an animal, as any consumption is a direct exchange of energies or vibrations, as they hold more of this polarity consciousness, you are intaking into your physical vessel more polarized vibrations. Whilst if you will consume a plant, because it has less ego development or sense of self, it has less polarity consciousness within their experience. Therefore, when you consume them, there is less polarity energies in the energy exchange, in the formula of the energetic exchange, let's say. There is less awareness or integration of perception in a plant consciousness than an animal, but there is less polarity consciousness density. Therefore, you are intaking directly less polarity vibrations in your body than when you consume an animal. And that is why four density beings prefer to consume the emotional polarized energy of a third density individual such as us, rather than the emotional charge within a plant or an animal. That's why, because we have more density of polarity consciousness, even though we have more awareness and we have a higher frequency because we have more integration of perception of our consciousness. Integration of perception and awareness is not completely the same of a state of a state of being or state of general state of consciousness. So we will be more evolved in that aspect than a plant, but a plant has less polarity consciousness, so they are emotionally more stable or integrated than us. 
Now, what happens in the four density when we have reached that level of consciousness? And how we reach that level of consciousness? To reach the four density of consciousness, you need to dissolve polarity consciousness and the illusions of separation with your own species, and learn how to stop projecting your own shadow consciousness in those who are of your same collective, of your own species, or any other level of consciousness. When you have reached out that level, then is when you're ready to go and you have already realized that you are one with your same species, that you are part of a one integral. So you awake to the truth that you are one, that we are one. Now, disclaimer, be careful. Sometimes these teachings of oneness leads to, unfortunately, leads to disassociation with one's reality and one's individual self. So I'm going to explain something. I'm going to clarify. The goal of unity consciousness is not that you disassociate from your own individual identity and you blend into the oneness of totally like collective cooperation or operation for your consciousness. Like working as a hive mind mentality organism, like all together as one. <laughs> that is not the purpose. The purpose is that you integrate into your awareness and to your heart space and to your state of being that you are one with your collective and that you are one with all that is, of course. But you do not have to lose your indi individuality because it serves the purpose of experience of consciousness, of the expression of consciousness. You remain being your own individual. Don't disassociate, please. It's rather a way to operate from the heart or a mi mental understanding already being integrated in your perception rather than a purely mental operative mechanism or dynamic, like a hive mind mentality species will do. And so what happens when you already reach for density? Well, you can decide to either feed from other beings that are of a lesser level of consciousness, as I was saying, or you can decide another path. There are many different ways and there are many different, let's say, ways to balance those needs. You don't need to, it's not like a virus system as the spiritual new age, a spiritual community or new age will dictate, like service to self or so service to others. You can pretty much balance those um, dynamics. So if you decide that you still want to eat, which is service to self, it is okay. And if you decide that you want to serve others, it is also great. So I will say that that binary system that was created about being service to self or service to others is a pretty, pretty much limited perspective, which serve understand the general idea behind it. But nevertheless, we're always exchanging information with external and we are never in the ultimate state of being when we are only in service to the rest because service to others is service to self and service to self is service to others but it's true that parting from this level you can reach out to a state of being in which you do not need consumption from other beings or service to self if you prefer so and that's where breatharianism fits in because it is actually possible to fit from ether or prana or real because it's available to all of us and above the four density levels there are densities that are just representations of higher or more evolved integrative states of being, of course, with aspects of our multidimensional self. As a side note, I will start to explain why many beings have been misled into the belief that we're going towards the fifth dimension, and I will explain what is the fifth dimension. Disclaimer, we are not going to the fifth dimension. That is a misunderstanding. The fifth dimension is where the higher self resides. It's a non-physical dimension, however, certain beings that have a body that is more silica-based rather than carbon-based and are thus quasi-physical in nature can project themselves in this dimension in a sense. But generally speaking, the fifth dimension is a non-physical dimension and is where there is no physicality and time and space is not, as we, is not as we know it to be. Time and space, in fact, is not working in a linear fashion. It is also the dimension that we go when we pass away and we leave our physical matrix or we leave our bodies because it's the dimension where we reintegrate ourselves or merge back again with our higher selves. For that reason, because the higher self is a higher aspect of ourself, the fifth dimension represents a vibration, a frequency that is that of divine consciousness, of Christ consciousness. It's the dimension where you all merge with all that is and sweet source. It's the dimension and the frequency of unconditional love. That's why people have misunderstood the messages about the fifth dimension and interpreted that we were going towards that density or that dimension. 
because we were being taught about unconditional love and about the connection to source and the higher self, the merging back with the higher self. But the fifth dimension is not a physical dimension. Therefore, it will take up to years for our bodies to even generations and generations to evolve our DNA collectively to a point in which it is so silicon based that we are transcending physicality into quasi physicality and then into not physicality. So when we hear that we're going to the fifth dimension, it's not that we're going physically there. It's not that we're going to the fifth dimension physically. It's that we are integrating the frequency of the fifth dimension in our state of being, in our heart space. So as you see, it's more of a integration of these energies or this frequency as a state of being, as a state of consciousness, not as a physical space to, to transcend to. That is the fourth density. That is where we're truly going. But the fourth density can be achieved whether you connect with the fifth dimension or not. Because it's more about integration of perception, about dynamics of consciousness, rather than state of being, or your emotional state of being. So that was my video and my metaphysical explanation on what it is ascension. I hope that you enjoyed my video. If you like it, give it a like. And subscribe if you're new and you like my channel and you want to see more of my content. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.